Okay, good morning everyone. It's my pleasure today to actually um, introduce our first group of speakers from uh, the community development team of the Office of the Provincial Advocate for Children and Youth in Ontario. In Ontario. Sorry. <laughs> Would you like to come up? <laughs> and as they're coming up, um, they're going to be talking to us this morning about how they've used play in their communities um, as part of engaging the First Nations youth in addressing their experiences and encouraging their communities and su supporting them with coping, healing, teaching, connecting and advocating. Laura Arndt is the Director of Strategic Development for the Provincial Advocates Office and the lead for the First Nations and Northern Strategy. She's joined by Andy Lee, Andy, yes, Edward Martinez and, and both Edward and Andy, oh, Edwin and Andy are community development officers with the team who support and work with uh, Laura. And then, of course, we've got these other three other very talented people called youth amplifiers, which I love the term, um, and Samantha Crow, Stefan, and Ray Hukumor are here to also speak with us. Together, they're going to share their how they've utilised play as an important part of their development. And I'd like to acknowledge that um, Scotiabank for this plenary because um, without that sort of support and sponsorship, we can't bring people together. So thank you very much. Please join me in welcoming this inspiring group of speakers. Good morning, everyone. How is everyone today? Uh, awesome. Okay, good. Um, as of uh, one of many indigenous people in Turtle Island, I would uh, first acknowledge the we are standing and warming around the Treaty 7 territory uh, and the traditional territory of uh, the Canine Nation, Siksika Nation, Pikani, Tistini, Na, and Stony Nakoda, in addition of the Metis people in Canada. Um, yep. Thank you. So I want to say good morning to everybody. Um, to Michael from Scotiabank, can I ask you to put your hand up? Michael, I just want you to know I am a beneficiary of a Scotiabank scholarship. So, many years ago, and I'm not going to say how many because I want you to all believe I'm under 30. Um, I was a student in the School of Disability Studies. Um, I am the first in my family to finish high school, first to go to university, and financially it was difficult. <laughs> and I was able to finish my degree 
because of Scotiabank's generosity. Um, I spend every day making sure that the people I meet, I say hello to. So hello, everybody. And I think it's critically important that we, each of us spend so much time in these places of invisibility. And I think it's very important that as we come together through play, that we understand that play is about moving people from invisibility to inclusion. And so Feathers of Hope and our work has really about moving, is about moving young people from the margins of the conversations of their lives into critical conversations around Indian residential school systems, the legacies of intergenerational trauma, the realities of the current realities of living in northern remote communities where the conditions are deplorable and that no family should live in, regardless of where in the world you live. And so through Feathers of Hope, we have tried to create this place of critical dialogue because we often underestimate that children are able to handle the conversations we're part of. And the fact is, they are. And you know what the magic bullet is? Play. Because when you deal with difficult matters and difficult issues, the way you start to build the safety net of relationship and community is getting people to spend time together. And play for children isn't just silliness. It's a critical developmental social frame in which learning happens. They learn to be teams, they learn to be community, they learn to be caring, they be, learn to be risk-taking. And so as we do our presentation today, the thing that I want to drive home, because I'm sad to see there are not enough children and young people in this room. And the reality is we have 30 minutes to speak about the critical urgency of youth voice in these conversations when we need a full hour and a half. The plenary sessions are critical conversations, but we cannot talk about play without young people being in the room because we get hooked into these dialogues of thinking play is something children do, and it isn't just children. It's something adolescents do. How many of you as adults belong to leagues? Be they hockey leagues, dart leagues, lacrosse leagues, cricket leagues. Play is critical for everybody. So our conversation today is really focused on asking you to break the glass ceiling around play, invite young people into this conference, create spaces like you have for us. And we do understand and truly appreciate the opportunity you're affording us, but don't let us be the last. The last thing I will say before I leave the podium is I wear a sweatshirt. And it says, work hard, dream big, be humble. This beautiful sweatshirt was created by this young man. And as a young person, he has created indigenous hockey, indigenous sport, and he's done this with no money, no resources, but his own desire to create opportunity in his community. And when you invite young people into these conversations, you mobilize the power of their voices, innovation, and community spiritedness. So I ask you as you hear their speech today to really listen because the reality is, is we're flipping this a bit. We're gonna talk about the work, and then we're gonna invite you this afternoon to the plenary where we'll do the presentation. So we're gonna flip it a little bit. But thank you so much for allowing us this opportunity, and please don't let this be the last time young people speak at your conference. I'm going to do the same as my boss. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I don't know why I'm speaking right after you, because I always hate speaking after you, because you're so good. Um, but I wanted to start off with, because um, I was there when we first did our first forum, and we had to plan the whole thing. And I think if you take anything away from my brief conversation today, um, is, that, is to stay, learn how to step back and let young people take on these roles. Um, so it was tasked, we were tasked to do this forum, to bring in 61, well, to bring in as many young people as we can from over 91 uh, First Nations communities in Northern Ontario. Our task was to address um, hopelessness and suicide in um, our Northern Ontario communities. 
Um, and I want to read this quote quickly, um, if we can just pull it back up. Um, we got it from uh, a report that was done 20 years before we started. And it, talks, it says this, despite the many testimonies of grief, loneliness, disappointment, frustration, and broken lives, feathers of hope and a better future stand among the ruins. So as it says there, it was done by, by Horizons of Hope, which was another youth group um, that came together to really uh, try and address these, these uh, concerns that young people were having in, in First Nations communities. And um, what came out of that was 20 years of leading up to, we're still dealing with those issues. Um, so that was the task I had at hand. Um, and what we did, first of all, as we tried to do at our office, is go to the young people. That's the first thing we need to do, listen to the young people. Um, and so through various, we went, went across Ontario and we spoke to uh, different communities, spoke to their young people, and it led to us hiring five young people to our organization to help us with planning this forum. Um, and I guess what I want to say is it was the young people that said to, en other, to engage other young people, we need to do it our way and we need to do it with play. Um, and I love play, so I was like, yeah, right on, let's do it. Um, so we literally sat down as a group of, well, I guess including me, six, and um, just hashed out everything. We went through all the reports that had come out over the last 20, 30 years. Um, these young people uh, went through and highlighted all the key areas that they wanted to tackle, um, figured out how to create the workshops, how to create the safety, um, the wellness, the mental wellness of everybody. Um, they figured out who else needed to be there, created partnerships, created relationships. Um, and I think it's through that that I th where our success comes in. So I'm not going to say anymore. I'm going to let them talk. I forgot my other part. I want to show you a little clip of what the forums look like. So here goes. In 2009, the Advocates Office began an outreach process with Northern Ontario's First Nation leadership and political leaders. We wanted to begin to understand the needs that exist for Northern First Nations children and youth. Everyone agreed a gathering of Northern First Nations youth was needed, and so Feathers of Hope was born. In March 2013, more than 100 young people from 62 of Ontario's Northern First Nations communities came together in Thunder Bay. This video reflects the vision, passion and commitment of the young people to be the change they want to see in their communities. These young people are Feathers of Hope. First Nations Youth Forum for the purpose of gathering youth from all over Northern Ontario to share their experiences, to relate, and to present recommendations and plans they made for their communities. These kids are pumped up because they have a voice and they realize that they can be a part of this future. And they realize that this country and the prosperity that was promised to their ancestors, they're a part of it. Others of Hope is a forum and an opportunity for First Nations youth to take the reins on their future. So we wanted to gather the youth to 
share their experiences and, and create these recommendations that they know will benefit their communities. The themes that we chose for the forum came from a report that came out 17 years ago called Horizons of Hope. So this forum is loosely based off of that one, as in we looked at that report and we noticed that a lot of the recommendations that they made are still issues today. But this time around, it's all, okay, what's wrong? And how are we going to fix it uh, from, from the young people's point of view? Buju, Washe, Anin, Wapshki Banishtikas, Indigenikas, Migizi, Indondem. Hello, everybody. My name is Samantha Crow, and I am actually no longer youth amplifier. I've been with the office for five years, um, but I'm a community development advisor because our office is about creating opportunities for young people and evolving and growing and developing skills. So as you see from the video, it was only a touch of what um, our forums are about because even though we have really, really difficult conversations about people and their issues and the things that they face on a daily basis, we also have a lot of fun because a lot of times young people are not able to be young people in their communities and we want to make sure that they can be. And so that's our number one goal is making sure that we have that safe space for young people and to allow young people to be who they are. Our forums are a platform for young people to gather connect, relate, and use their voice to share their issues and sustainable uh, recommendations and solutions for their communities to different dignitaries. Too often, people go to our communities and say, this is what's wrong, and this is how we're going to fix it. And we didn't want to do that anymore. We wanted to hear directly from young people, what are the issues you see, and how are we going to fix it? So, thank you. Feathers of Hope is about acknowledging and recognizing the strength, the expertise, and the power of young people, and people need to listen. I actually want to share a piece of writing that um, not many people have heard, so this is very different for me. <laughs> um, but it's about individual and a collective experience. People arrive, strange beings met. Help is given, but it's returned with threat. Promises are made and broken, lives destroyed right in the open. Millions are cold and dead without a single ounce of remorse. But you only learn about savages in your course. History is buried alive as people today are struggling to breathe. But when you're seven, you don't know this. All you know is what you see, broken homes and empty fridges. I satisfied my hunger with different realities. I was a lucky one coming out alive with only a few scars, but those are something that no one sees. Not even your own mother, who is doing her best, trying to rise above the ashes, because everyone went down in flames when people came in and took whatever they wanted. Your sanity, your faith, even your children. We still try to continue to live in the past and our old realities. Trying to become better and be true to yourself has been a long time coming, seven generations to be exact. That seven-year-old grew up and over all the expectations people had. I lived to do better, to feel better, to be better, because God knows this place needs it, because God knows I need this. Um, so that's to kind of give maybe a little bit of context because some may not know some of the realities that a lot of um, First Nations people have experienced, and not every, every experience and every memory is the same. We all have different lives and different experiences and cultures and traditions, but we, as a people, as a collective, we have been years of tragedy and trauma and grief and having to deal with it, and it's young people who are dealing with this. It's young people who are having to live with the legacies. It's young people living with the intergenerational trauma, and it's young people who want to change. It's young people who want to move forward because they understand we need to go forward. We can't keep living the same life. And that's what young people are asking. They're asking for you to come in, step hand in hand, work as, together as a partnership to have a, a better future. And this is what Feathers of Hope is about. It's creating those partnerships, creating that community, creating that sense of belonging, because we need to belong and we need to move forward. So I want to actually make a note that um, 
I've been dressing like this all week, feeling like uh, being professional or, or being what is seen as professional, but it's because it, I do this to be seen, because otherwise I get, you speak so well as they hand their business card to someone next to me. Even though I'm the longest standing employee in my office, because I look younger, I am seen as not capable. And that's not right because young people have just as much expertise and experience and skills as anybody else. And that's why Feathers of Hope sees young people as experts because they are the experts in their lives. And we cannot dismiss that, we cannot ignore that, and we need to acknowledge it and harness that because young people are not leaders of tomorrow, they're leaders of today and we need to be there with them for that. So I started as an amplifier, like I said. I've been at the office for five years. So in that five years, my role was to amplify the voices of young people. I had no idea what I was getting into. <laughs> I applied for a job and, and little do I know it was a job that I was so passionate about that brought me so much honor and memories and experience to be with, working with such powerful, young, brave people who are doing the work in their communities already. It's just giving them that opportunity, that platform to show what they're doing. So I just kind of do it now, but in my role of a, as a community development advisor. <laughs> so <laughs> it's still the same, but just a different title. But I want to acknowledge that amplifiers are part of every single process that we do. As an office, we acknowledge that young people are staff. They, we acknowledge the power and the intelligence of young people. And so whenever we have events, uh, meetings or anything, young people are, are a part of everything we do. They are part of every decision because we cannot move to the future without having people who are affected by that future as not decision-making people. So we want to make sure that we're constantly having quality resources and services um, and experiences for young people whenever we have events or meetings or workshops or presentations or whatever we do. It's about creating safe spaces like getting out of your ego and being comfortable and genuine because otherwise young people will cut through that BS faster than anything will ever happen. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of people experience this in their work and in, you need to be there with young people and be real with them because they'll be real with you and that'll be even more richness within your program and within your research and with anything else. It's about being there with them and acknowledging what they do. So after our very first forum where we had workshops and games and connection and playing and building and advocating and using their voice, we created a report called Feathers of Hope, uh, First Nations Youth Action Initiative. And so this had the voices of young people. So as amplifiers, we wrote that report. We had youth advisories who were people at the forum that we made sure that whatever was said was true to the word, that was as real and as raw as possible because we didn't want to sugarcoat the issues that are happening. We wanted to dispel myths, we wanted to present truths because a lot of times people have no idea, even, they're, even if they're from Canada, they have no idea what's going on in their backyard. And we wanted to stop that, we wanted to educate people. So it's an education tool, but it also has 88 steps to make hope real. So these are initiatives that uh, an individual or a community or a government can take on so that we can create healthier solutions within our communities. After that, we also had uh, three forums, one covering justice and juries, so that's about the overrepresentation of the First Nations people within the justice system, but the underrepresentation of First Nations people in juries. So where's your juries up here if you don't have anybody in there? We also had, um, a forum about child welfare, so little C and big C. So actually being in a state of care, being in governmental care, but also what is the well-being of a child and how can we get there? And then we had culture identity and belonging, so addressing who we are as individuals, as people, where do we belong, how do we fit in, and, and what does it mean to really connect and belong? And so from there we have advisories, um, because we wanna have resources for young people after they share this. We don't want to leave them hanging. This is about them and, and creating those opportunities for young people and, and making sure that they have the resources and the skills to, to do what they need to do within their communities. So we're currently working on stuff for the child welfare and for the CIB forum, the culture and everything belonging, and then that will come up in the future. But I think the most powerful thing that I love so much and it makes me so happy is seeing the transformation in young people at these forums that we have. You have young people who are coming in with hoodies on, earphones in, and they're so isolated. Even though there's hundreds of people around them, they're within themselves. But as the days go on and there's breaking, so we're creating spaces, we're creating communication and those connections, young people are transforming into really 
they're not hopeless or feeling stuck anymore because a lot of times in communities you feel stuck but they're feeling a spark, a hope. They can do something in their future. So some might think finishing their education is really small, but it can be huge for a young person, huge. And I've heard of young people wanting to go back to high school or wanting to do post-secondary or wanting to do uh, youth councils or be on their, ch uh, their chief and council, so being a part of their politics, so wanting to change the actual structure within their communities. But even just chronic wanting to create other programs and things for other young people because we have young people as young as 13 or 14 saying it's too late for them but they want it better for their nieces and nephews and, and for their little cousins and little brothers and sisters because at 13 or 14 they felt that there's already too many hardships and it's too late for them but these big powerful voices are are moving forward and they're thinking of other people and that doesn't happen alone that happens with partnerships it happens with relationships and and we do that with as many people as possible because it takes a community to change. It's gonna take years to change this, but we're gonna keep working at it and we're gonna keep building those partnerships and those connections because we're gonna get there because we need to get there. And I wanna reach out to Edwin because Edwin has been a part of the process, but in a different role before. And it takes all people and all roles to make sure this happens. So thank you, Miigwech. When all this magic took place, I was in charge of setting the playing field of the environments and the conditions for the forum. I used to work for that property, for that hotel, where all of these forums took place. Knowing the purpose and goals of the forums and working with the staff in preparations of all the logistics, creating a sense of community amongst the staff in order to deliver a united approach in a welcoming atmosphere. Setting the tone and the spirit amongst the staff enhanced the feel of community. Cultural awareness and training took place with all the staff to better understand our guests. Superior customer care was only a small goal, but rather it was to develop a meaningful relationship in the most genuine way. Staff, I remember, was actively engaged with all the youth at the different forums. They were jumping, they were clapping high five. The young people were acknowledging my staff and including them in all of their play. It was a true act of community, togetherness. In order to create the right environment and conditions, it took vision, passion, and commitment to action from all the parties involved. I remember to this day a young person that came across saying, can you believe this? They bought this entire hotel so we can have this gathering. Over the last 17 to 20 years in the customer service and hospitality field, I never encountered a group of young people so connected, so in tune, so participatory, so engaged. While the forum took place, I had the opportunities of holding a, holding a session, of uh, a pump-up session, of uh, cardio salsa. <laughs> <laughs> and the energy amongst the floor, I'm a type of person that I feed off the energy of the floor. The energy of the floor, it was so powerful that it's almost impossible for me to explain it. It was powerful. You remember that, right? Yeah. <laughs> From that moment, I knew I wanted to be part of this process. I wanted to be part of Feathers of Hope. And while talking about process, Feathers of Hope is about processes. And our process consists in the four pillars. The first one is inspire inspires First Nation young people to have hope and raise their voices in creating change. The second pillar is creating a safe, a safe space. A safe space for the youth where they could feel inspired and at ease, no pressure. And in the absence of adults, there were no limitations to their imagination and where we nurture 
their full potential through play. The third pillar is community-based. We aim to build a community of young people who support one another, becoming stronger, and relationship that they built where nobody is left behind. A community of friendship. They made friendships during, that, the, during the forums that will forever be in their minds and memories. The last pillar is to learn. Not only us as adults were able to learn. Youth also communicate with us, and we put champions in place so they can ob obtain, obtain the knowledge that they were seeking. When you combine these four pillars, where they're inspired, safe, belonging to a trusting community, and have developed skills and knowledge, they become confident of each other. They become better advocates. After all, they know their problems better than anybody else. Feathers of Hope is about creating opportunities and experiences. When you combine those four pillars through the power of play, that's where the magic truly happens. Ray, would you like sharing with us some of those opportunities and experiences? Sure. <laughs> I got involved in 2015 as a participant at the Child Welfare Forum, and then I was asked to go again for the culture, identity, and belonging. Um, just give me one sec. I'm kind of a little nervous. There's a lot of people in this room. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> um, I was introduced to Feathers of Hope at a forum. Um, I'm, I was in foster care, and I was at a conference for um, children in, in care. And this presentation really stuck up in, um, in, the, in what I found that meant a lot to me. Uh, yeah. I had concerns and opinions about in and out of foster in and out of foster care for for First Nations youth. I had I was completely welcomed. <laughs> just give me a sec. <laughs> I was welcomed into the environment that had a sense of togetherness, like community. I had a sense of safety and care, and it was a challenge. There was a bunch of challenging talks. But through the volunteers and anyone who was standing in the, the, ho in the hotel made sure that we were OK. I didn't feel alone, and I didn't feel judged, so I spoke up about these concerns. And through this, it inspired me to keep doing this. It inspired me to keep talking about the things that are happening behind closed doors. I was overjoyed when I got the opportunity to become part of the further process in the reports that we and and today that we are presenting feathers of feathers of hope encourage the challenge it gives opportunities and for sharing and connections with people in the culture it encourages uncomfortability in safe spaces like getting up and doing that salsa dance <laughs> <laughs> i was not a dancer before that i always <laughs> i was one to just move like this <laughs> but then he said, dance like no one is watching. And now I have the passion just to dance now. There is a big table at, this, at the forums that we present in front of. And that was the most public speaking thing. And it made, it made me fall in love with the idea of advocacy. The idea of speaking for yourself and others. I'm so glad that I, was, I participated two years ago. I, w I was scared because it was my first flight and I was not much of traveling outside of where I came from. And now I am standing in front of you doing what I love to do, which is speaking on behalf of myself and others. This is where my confidence really stemmed from. The first forum, I was quiet with the hoodie and the headphones in. <laughs> and I never thought that I would be standing in front of you two, in front of you guys today presenting. 
The idea of youth involvement is our goal, creating space for them to be heard, to share their ideas and thoughts. We need our, we, <laughs> our youth and our, our youth is our future. They are our bosses and our experts. We need them to speak up and speak out. And won't you agree, Stefan? Well, just like uh, with Ray, I'm nervous and excited, but we got to embrace it, though, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> watch it. Mr. Otegataig, Stefan. Um, sorry, I'll start over. Watch it, Mr. Otegataig. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to tell you that I'm going to tell you that First Nation is not going to Hello, my name is Stefan. I mean, Eagle Whistle Sitting Walk. I'm from Kisachuan First Nation. I'm also known as Stuff on Friday in Canada. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I started out pretty young in um, advocating. I was 15. I started out locally, then I, when I went, uh, when I moved out of my First Nation, it was one of the most hardest things I've ever done in my life, leaving my land my people, my family, just to get a better education, just to try and live a normal, stable life. And I'm not sure why I even have to leave home for that, to live in a town <coughs> where it has better healthcare system, education system, and more opportunities for youth to do more things. I'm sure almost all of you guys don't even know what a reservation is, a res where us First Nation people live in isolation. <coughs> and that's where our youth, they're burdened by it because most of these reservations don't even have highways. Most of them are in flying communities where we have to, actually, most of these communities don't even have doctors in the clinic or the so-called hospitals we live in. Because th the nurses back home want to give us like, what, a Tylenol or Motrin for heart attacks. And that's not right. And I believe starting young is where the true making of a better generational direction for the present and future happens. I myself struggled when I was younger too. It's not just me, there's a lot of First Nations kids that are struggling, that are trying to live a better prosperity. Because growing up in a reservation, it is hard, even though it is home, like our heart is there, but sometimes our mind is somewhere else. Not many of you guys will ever understand that. And that's just the true reality that we live in Canada. And that's one of the important reasons why I want to advocate, I want to be part of the voice for our people, for the young people. And it's a true honor to be standing here, in, I mean, sitting here talking <laughs> <laughs> in front of everyone, all these beautiful faces here, all over different culture, all over the world, basically. And what's more inspiring is that all of you are having a knowledge of what we First Nation people go through on a daily basis. 
the ongoing crisis we go through. And with Fridays of Hope, it gave me hope. It gave me a better lifestyle. It really, like the first, the forum I went to was last 2016. Yeah, 2016, in the Culture Identity Belonging Forum. I was so pumped up for that because it was a traditional aspect of it. And I know I was going to meet a lot of different people, a lot of different voices, and hearing all those voices. It was really, it is a truly honor to attend it. It was, I believe, a four or five day event, and I just embraced it, met a lot of people, I always talked about cheese sticks to random people. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they know what I mean. <laughs> I love to be random, but in a good way. <laughs> but yes, that, that uh, forum really gave me so much hope, so much inspiration. And once that uh, forum ended, like uh, I had a forum hangover. Not the bad hangover. <laughs> so, once I got back home, uh, that's when I helped with my cousin. Well, I guess he's my brother because I lived with him my whole life. Um, we were like, one day we were like, we should start a youth council. So not even a week after we started a youth council. <laughs> and because the Feathers of Hope, like it has all these different aspects, all these different speakers, all these different ideas we wanted to take it as one, because we are one. And I was part of uh, a NAN youth delegation, which was made of uh, 24, 24 youth from the Nishinaabeaski Nation of Treaty 9. We went to Ottawa for one week. We went with our Grand Chief, Deputy Grand Chief, other delegates and chaperones. That whole week, we met with um, probably 15, 15 different MPs, uh, six senators, including Justice, I mean, <laughs> including Maurice Sinclair. <laughs> we gave him a nickname. His nickname's now Justinator. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> the, on Thursday, the, the day before we left, uh, we actually met the Prime Minister of, of Canada, Justin Trudeau. We also met Caroline Bennett, uh, health minister, minister, oh my gosh, health minister at the time, um, Pimlot, Jane Pimlot, Pilpot. Whoa, that was cool. <laughs> 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 and that's where we uh, also uh, express our issues, our reality to the prime minister. It was intimidating because it was the prime minister. <laughs> but we embraced it because we want, we, he needed to know the truth and this is only one area out of the out of Canada, and that's the thing people don't understand because there's over 600 First Nations in Canada, even Inuit up north. Just think about the youth. There's a lot of youth, and Canada doesn't even know what First Nation is sometimes because I even talk to like strangers at airports <laughs> and all that stuff and. They haven't heard of it because it's, we're so isolated. And um, um, before I end my speech, I just want everyone to say two things, or if you wish to, <laughs> if you wish to say, can everyone say "wache," "wache," and "buzu." That's how we say hello in Cree and in French. I mean, um, <laughs> Ojibwe. <laughs> Because it's similar to bonjour. <laughs> and um, one last thing before I end as well. This ego fetter is a sacred gift from our creator. It's an honor to hold this in front of you guys right now. And it's an important aspect of our people. And I want you to know that this is very important to us. Because our youth, their hearts are up and looking. Question is, are they blinded by their mind, the government, the parents? 
And with Feathers of Hope, it gives that integrity, that vision, the strength to keep moving and to keep going together as one because we're all united together. And it's important for Feathers of Hope to keep going no matter what, no matter circumstances. Okay, Miigaj, thank you very much. I want to do one quick little shout out. We're really, really big on social media. So if you have Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, F-O-H-T-B-A-Y. We, are, uh, we do everything with our social media to connect with young people, with different organizations. We post what we're doing, we post different opportunities for young people, and we want to make sure that there's as many things going on. So that's a way for if other things are coming up that you know for young people, you can send it to us so we can share it to our network. But it's also a way to reach out to us, so if you want to request for us to come to your community or do anything, feel free. We want to spread what Feathers of Hope is. We give Feathers of Hope to other people, to other communities, because we want to spread the message of hope and unity and power of young people. So, miigwech. Thank you. I think that's the first standing ovation of the conference. Yes? <laughs> um, and I know that Andy said he hated uh, speaking after Laura, but I think there's a few other people that are going to hate speaking after all of you, okay? <laughs> so, you're, um, I thank you for reminding us that we cannot talk about play without young people. And your leadership has been truly inspiring. And it has been our honour to have heard your story. Uh, I do hope that when you met with Justin Trudeau, which I had been promised we could see him, that you actually told him that he was only keeping the seat warm for you, okay? <laughs> because I, I, I'm, I'm feeling that we've got, you know... You're not just going to be on this stage. You're speaking to 700 people today, but you're going to be speaking to a lot more people in the future, I'm sure, all of you. So thank you very much. We're quite inspired, and we certainly hope that um, we'll hear lots more about you. And, and those of you who wish to come to the plenary afterwards, there will be a talking circle, and so your questions and your answers, um, are, that'll be the opportunity, because we are a little over time.